Hi, Lawrence. Hi. <laughs> good, to, good to meet you. Welcome in the team. Thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to, uh, you know, make, make, building our business here in America. I think we have an excellent, uh, um, you know, IT program. You know, uh, uh, when I got hired, I had once sold uh, electronic medical records. So I have a very good feel for the type of um, selling points. Uh, maybe some that you guys haven't thought about because electronic medical records obviously is different than running an entire company and yet for a physician the medical records uh, was running their entire business. Yeah. So you know the only difference is the size and of course the medical records were more specifically designed for a just a practice and this is you know, uh, of course, covering all aspects of, of the business. But having said that, there are certainly a lot of advantages. Um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I believe that our system will be able to help the CEOs and the COOs and, you know, the top echelon of these nonprofit organizations to uh, meet you know, to um, help them reach their 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 objectives, their five-year plans, etc. You know, uh, one of the things that uh, well, I don't want to talk so much because I don't want to waste our time. But you get the idea. Sorry, Lawrence. That's that's. I mean, that's a that's a good pitch. Uh, that's a good sales pitch. Uh, to to be honest with you, in France. We have less than five percent of our clients who use the medical part. Uh huh. Uh, oh, there. Can you see me now? Yeah, I can actually see you. Good. Um, I, I don't think you can see me because the point is more like you look at my computer. That's all right. Um, my screen. In fact, uh, I'm just going to shrink this okay. down, Maybe. but at least you can see me. That's a good. That's a good start. All right. I think you can see my face for at least a second or two, right? Oh, I don't know. I, I took you off. <laughs> I'm, I'm back on your screen. I don't want to get distracted. The only other thing I want to do is, uh, how do I increase the sound? Is there a button around here? Yeah, so it's usually, uh, you're on an iMac or an iBook, like it's a portable computer? Or yeah, I'm on the Air, the iBook okay. Air. Now there's a mute button all the way on my left at the bottom. Okay, so it's usually around F12 or F11. There are some buttons that look like sound buttons. Uh, I'm looking for that. I have the stop video. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm looking at my mute, and it's just going up. Uh, as I talk, I can see it just going up about halfway. No, I mean, if you look at your keyboard. Okay. Uh, oh, at my keyboard. So what am I looking for? Oh, I see it. F12. Okay. It's up all the way now. Yeah. Thank you. Better? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, welcome to Team Lawrence. As I said, uh, in France, we don't have that many people using the medical part. And so I don't know about America. I have no idea how it works in the U.S. Uh, Marcelo has a better knowledge of the market than me, and you probably have a better knowledge of the market than Marcelo. I'm not sure, but... Um, anyway... Um, we're pretty much really looking forward to have this um, American market opening up. It's a really big opportunity, and Marcel has pulled off some crazy amount of work into doing this. So, and I actually entered the company as a friend of Marcel. Oh, very good. Uh, so, so, I really hope for him that it's going to work. He's really, really motivated on this project. Well, I will say this, I'm very impressed with his, uh, you know, uh, programming knowledge. You know, he was showing me <clears throat> all the work that he had done to try to identify uh, the accounts we're going to try to hit in the very beginning. Of course, I was very impressed that he was able to pull all that data out and uh, organize it the way he did. Um, that's very impressive. But then again, I'm yep. also impressed that he can speak two languages. I'm going to start studying French so that uh, it'll be a little bit easier for me and, and him. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, I bring something to the table that 
you know, he doesn't have, which is my years of experience in the medical field, uh, you know, being able to answer those kind of questions with, um, you know, uh, um, uh, confidence when I speak to, you know, the medical part of the program. And uh, the other part, of course, that's pretty generic. So, you know, like I said, uh, I, I think, I think uh, and, and so far I haven't really found anything compatible out there. No, it's, um, it's because in, in France we, had, uh, we have more and more regulations um, forcing institutions to, to get these kind of apps. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because in France, um, like, medical social um, institutions are very related and are, are compelled by the states to do, by, by our government, to do a lot of things. Because all of this is really public funded a lot. Right. And so basically the government wants our medical social institution to become, become more uh, digitalized, as we say. And so, well, as you can see, like, uh, more and more institutions have a very strong need for these kinds of um, apps, actually. No question about it. Uh, you know, like I said, from my experience with electronic medical records, eventually <clears throat> they'll be, sta you know, this type of program may wind up becoming standardized. And in fact, that's one of the ways I want to present it as <clears throat> uh, not just being, you know, uh, unique, but eventually being standardized <clears throat> because as you put it, the information that the government needs to get off the system, if there are just too many different programs out there, it just gets too confusing. Yeah. So, you know, to have a single program where you're not, you know, working with multiple apps, uh, but just a single app that has everything well-defined and clear. And, of course, I understand that we may have to tweak it maybe add some things and subtract some things because, uh, you know, there is a difference between uh, your HIPAA and our HIPAA and uh, the type of information that, you know, both governments uh, acquire. But having said that, um, uh, you know, there isn't, you know, every, every uh, nonprofit is, has a direction as far as I'm concerned. In other words, they all have like a five-year plan. I mean, nobody can go past five years, but they yeah. know that with between now and the next five years, whether they're going to add another building, whether they're going to, you know, paint the whole place or replace all the, all the beds or whatever they want to do. Uh, in fact, one of the issues that we're going to run into right now is the fact that in America, they have two types of of um, uh, budgets. Those that start in July and end in June. Now those budgets are associated more with uh, the medical field like hospitals. Yeah. You'll find that residents or, or interns will start in July uh, and then uh, after four years they end in June. So does colleges and universities. Then you have, uh, you know, the normal January through December. So considering we're almost into November now, uh, you know, most of these companies have already um, uh, allocated their budgets for next year. If they haven't done that, then, well, they can't. They, they have to have done this at least a month or two ago. to okay, make. So you're saying there are basically two sales season games and uh, right. sales in season. Well, okay. well uh, as, uh, I, as I mentioned to him, uh, you know, it's possible that we might be able to, you know, squeeze in. In other words, they may have already uh, planned their budget for next year, but if we can get in there fast enough, it's possible that we might be able to disrupt that budget and say, well, you know what, this is more important. We never thought about it. And we're using, let's say, a paper system right now. And uh, we see the, um, the value in yeah. moving it over. 
as an example, and, and the same thing went for electronic medical records. Uh, I, I see what you mean. Don't worry. Okay. It's just, okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll shut up now, and, and we'll go through the onboarding. I, I, I really, I'd love to discuss the American market. I don't really know much about the American market right now, and it's very interesting for me, uh, as I might have to do some missions in New York or even come to work. In I'll be coming out to you in, in, in the second week of November for my training. So you can steal uh, me for a couple of hours. I'll have no problems. You know, we can have a like a, a working lunch or a working dinner together and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll school you as best I can. That'd be great. Uh, <laughs> but so the point is uh, today my job is to uh, Show, give you an, an, a glimpse um, at the sales presentation I've been doing so far in France. Good. So, uh, I know Marcelin did a very technical presentation to you. This is more sales oriented. Right. Uh, as, I'm not a gigantic salesman, uh, and especially in France, I think sales is less aggressive than in, in the US. <laughs> You're probably right about that. <laughs> uh, so, uh, as you can, just a question. Can you? I know you. You can't understand. But a good question would be: Can you read? Uh, well, I can read it, but it is in uh, French. French. Although yes. I, I, I know that the I, I maybe in the future I'm going to find an app that will translate it all for me. In fact, when I went on to Zoom. And your the Zoom that you sent me was in French, and it had a oh, co- click to so. yeah. As soon as I clicked it, it switched it all to English. So yeah. So just so you know, um, in case there's something you don't understand, you really need translation. Uh, I'll tell you uh, this English presentation. I've made it. I, I think I've just done it once for training for one of our trainees. Okay. Uh, so um, it's it's not probably it's. Uh, I hope, uh, well, as they say, pardon my English. Uh, if there's anything wrong with my English, just stop me, don't hesitate. Uh, what matters is that you understand what I say. Right, right, right. So and I'm not worried about this. And, you know, after I get, all, you know, once we're through and I go through it again, I'll start, you know, looking up or translating certain words. Uh, the ones that are going to that are going to repeat themselves more often through the system, so that I'm more comfortable with it. Sure. So we, we got a lot of time, but uh, well, that's not really time lost. It's, it's good we get to know each other. Um, let me just put an alarm so I can just see a bit how much time I'm taking. So. Uh, Again, if there is any problem with, problem with translation, or if my accent is not good enough, or if there is a word you don't understand, uh, just let me know. Uh, we're here so you understand this presentation, not, not just to let I run through it, correct? Right? I promise, <clears throat> promise you I will ask you to repeat yourself if I don't, if I don't understand or if there's a, you know, a problem in the reception at some point. I do that all the time, so I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed or afraid, and I won't sit here and nod my head if I don't know what's going on. I don't believe in that. I, I, I've had a lot of clients that have done that, and then you walk away, and they don't know what you just said. You just didn't make a sale. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, uh, I find that, uh, you know, just being straightforward and honest is really appreciated, and sometimes accents are way too heavy or whatever it is. And uh, so don't worry about that. I, I have no qualms, and I feel that, you know, again, being honest like that seems to rule the day. People just, uh, I, actually, I find that people are more endeared because, they, real, because they, they realize that you are that interested. You know what I mean? But anyway, all right. So we're on the next page. No, I'm just reloading. I see. Um, so I was hoping that you would see the birthday here. We have some clients that literally signed with us just because of the birthday cards here. They said it may seem more humane. I'm just giving you this. Um, all right, so starting from now, I'll be treating you as a client. Yes. And so what I suggest is that I start with a about 20 minute presentation of the program. 
and then we can go on into Q&A. The presentation is, of course, with fictive people. They do not exist. And it's not made to show you the whole thing. It's just made to show you the basic um, functionalities. I am pretty sure that you will need personalized and specified uh, functionalities, and we can totally go into this after the presentation. I just want to give you a quick overview. OK. So, what is Ogeris? Uh, I like to start with this quote. Uh, Ogeris is a web-based tool that is made to, and I'm translating here. Yes. It's made to produce, consult, and share all the data useful to accompany your care recipients. As you'll see, it reinforces the quality of your services by making them work together constantly. With Ogeris, you can control the gathering and sharing of data among professionals. Thus, you can truly improve the coordination of everyone's actions, guarantee the traceability and continuity of these actions, and support the projects of your care recipients. So, during this presentation, I will simply show you the most basic features as a ground for a conversation. And I will use the root of a cared one in Ogeris as an example. I will show you six basic features. The admission model, the care recipient record, the individual support plan or project module, the calendar and progress notes, and finally, the report editor module. I'm pretty sure there will be better translation for this later, uh, but I hope it will do for now. Very good. So, to start with, Ogiris allows you to very easily organize the admission of applications of, of the admission of your the admission applications of your current care recipients and the new ones in any structure you manage, any institution. Uh, inside the app we call them structures, or each institution is a structure. So for that you just need to go there. Okay. In yeah, don't. Uh, it's waiting list, basically. Here are all the applications currently being treated or waiting for replies. If I just click on Add here, Ajouter, in that window, I can easily enter all the required information to create a new application. If I need a new application for someone who already has a care recipient record in Orgiris, I simply type his or her name here, and his or her infos will be automatically input into the right places, no need to specify them. Right. Once the, once the application has been made, I won't do it here, but once it appears here, I can then, in one or two clicks, organize a, organize a meeting for the application, or I can also I can also see all the all the files related to the applications, all the transmissions related to the applications, and of course, just one click, I can admit the care the care recipient in my in my institution. Now, once someone is admitted in at least one structure. This person will have a care recipient record. Before we go on into the file of the care recipient record, I would just like to remind you, of course, that Ogiris is, of course, entirely secured, secured and in accordance with the RGPD, which is the French law for cybersecurity. Every professional accessing Ogiris is limited in his or her clearances. The respect of private life and medical privacy are our, our top priority. So, Ogiris is based on the building of a single care recipient record that gathers all the data and professional writings that account for the care recipient's past, current, and future situation. Let us open one file. So, you go into the list of care recipients. You can see here that list quickly access some documents, the calendar of this recipient, transmissions related to these care recipients, 
all the documents related to this person, etc., etc. And I will just enter this file. This is a care recipient record. With the proper clearances, I can also access the medical file and the care record. But we can go back to that during the question time. For now, let's focus on this care recipient record, the administrative and administrative and pedagogic part of it. As you can see, I can store here a considerable amount of information. I won't go into detail on all of them, but the idea is once you put one an information here, it can be quickly exploited in any kind of document you need. For example, I can put the decision of the, well, I don't know the word for that in English, so I'll take something else. Um, for example, I can take the social security number of this care recipient, I write it here, and when it's, once it's wrote there, if I need to produce a document that includes its social security number, OGRIS will directly go, come and find this social security number here. So when you put, um, as, as your example, the social security number in, it will uh, populate all the other pages where a social security number would be requested. And more than this, it will also be able to produce documents with this social, social security number. Without copying and pasting. it. Without copy and pasting. Okay, good, excellent. Uh, basically, what I want to show you about this um, care recipient record is not all the information you're storing, but the fact that this record is not closed on itself. It is discussing directly with the exterior world. So okay. what I mean by that is that you can add some documents to this record that are not part of Ogiris, and you can produce documents from this record that you can use outside of Ogiris. When you, you say when you say outside, you're talking though within our program. Uh, not in other programs. Ogiris is not connected. It's, no, I'm saying just programs. yeah, just within our program uh, as we uh, move around. All right. Let, let me show you. That that, that Here, would be uh, my expectation anyway. Here you have a button called Edition. Uh huh. And here you can print all the data in this uh, record. Or here you can print the calendar of this record. Mm -hmm. Or of this care recipient. Or here you can print the, um, the institutional contract of this care recipient. Okay. If you want this contract to include information regarding his social security number, right. you can ask for it and it will directly come and get it. Okay. So that's how you can produce documents. One other, qu one other quick question. So if you're generating a, a different document and let's say that you don't want the social security number to be generated in that document, you can go in there and just uh, delete it or take it you out? Can. So these are templates you, you, in theory, you have customized yourself. All right, so then, okay. Templates, and mm -hmm. you can customize them to add your logo, to add any information, or remove any information you don't want to see there. Well, my, yeah, because that, my question would have been this. If I generate a template, social security numbers in it, for whatever reason, I don't want to share that particular information, and I just, you know, highlight it and delete it, it's not going to regenerate it because it's an empty box now it'll just print it out without that social security number yeah okay you can, That's you can adapt the template you mean yeah. you can adapt the templates into template file in the template module right See, we understand. now yeah. I understand what you're saying my question was on, on a one-off in other words I don't necessarily want to uh, make this available to all my clients but I have one client where I want to give somebody some information, but I want to remove some information off that template. When I remove it, it's not going to automatically regenerate it because the system is designed to put that information in. You can override so, that if you need to. This is something you would need to program. 
Let, let me show you. An okay. Example. Well, then that's all. Okay. Then I understand. If if you need to like, program it, then that's fine. Like if you see here, I can print the care recipient record, the whole of it, mm -hmm. and it asks me what I want to in include: the address. Oh, uh, you do it that picture. way. Yeah. You, you could also say here, please don't uh, add or remove uh, right. the care okay. the social number. All right, so that's the way you would go about doing it. If you needed to go in there and tweak it uh, uh, just for that one patient, yep. you could just go uh, in there and yeah. tweak that one report. Now, if you tweak the report, it's going to affect all future reports? Or, is there, or, 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 or you have to save it in order to, for it to affect all future reports? You have to save the template as different. Okay. okay. You can also go into the template, produce a different template for a single occasion, but it's not through here, it's through the template file. All right. Very good. So that's how you produce documents based on Osiris, basically. And Osiris is made to go and fetch the right information at the right place to produce your documents quickly. Once you've entered the information in, it will always be fetched quickly and easily. Got it. Inversely, the care recipient record is also made to store information from outside. So here you have this little button called GED. Okay. Roughly made from French, it's um, what do you, is it? Uh, it's a document management system. Right. So clicking on it, I can immediately see that there is, for example, the passport. His document. Got Many it. Documents scanned, including his passport, that I can even see here in advance in, pre in, um, in preview and because a care recipient sometimes have a lot of documents attached all of these documents are actually archived and classic are archived based on different um, categories that you can personalize yourself excellent so Let's say, for example. Yeah, sure. If if, if a uh, patient is going on vacation with their family and they're going to come to the United States and they need dialysis or something like that, then uh, the social worker there can uh, access the passport information, etc., to try to set things up so that that patient can be taken care of on vacation, as an example. Here, you see, I took the category identity for mm -hmm. passports, right. uh, resident card, etc., and I just see the passport appearing here. Got it. So, that's what I wanted to show you mostly about the care recipient record, is that it has all the information, it has even the information that Osiris cannot store, they are stored in the document management system. And all these information can then be used very quickly and efficiently by your administration. I'll right. show you that it will be deeper, but for now I want to go deeper in this care recipient record to show you the, uh, the user's ISP for individual support plan. I'm not sure you use this term, Marcel told me it's a good term, but it will depend probably. So for that, we go into structure, admission, and projects. Mm -hmm. And here I can quickly check where my user is currently in care, what group he belongs to, and what project he has. Hmm. So the ISP the project, the ISP module is designed to conform and to conform and to meet both your expectations and your government's expectations. This line is very French. I don't know about the US. <laughs> Here I can see that Achilles, my user, has two ongoing projects. One is to learn saxophone, and the other one is to learn to dress by himself in the morning. Let's open that one okay. and see what it's by. Here I can see that Achilles has, um, so just like in the care recipients record, you find here all the required information in tabs and rubric. So if I, let me just interrupt for a second because I want to see if um, um, I read what what you wrote in, in French and I think it says that 
his uh, hygiene maintenance is uh, he has problems with his psycho with, with the psychomotor. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm just I'm just trying to get used to the French part of it, so I have a better idea of what I'm reading. Okay. You will only have to deal with the English part, the French part. French is a hellish language. That's all right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You don't want to deal with French, trust me. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, uh, I, th I, I, I actually, I don't, I, I, right now, I just want to learn this and become an expert on this. But I also feel that learning a little bit of French may help in, uh, dis right. you know, helping the company in general to uh, make whatever uh, changes we need in America. You know what I mean? Yes, well, anyway, you know, let's not get off on that. All differences, but yeah. yeah, let's not get astray. Yeah. So, um, so I'm in his ISP uh, record, mm -hmm. and um, just like in the care recipients record, you have a DMS to attach files, and here is his first uh, evaluation. And just like in the care recipients record, you have an edition module that allows you to produce new documents. Uh, okay. I'll get back to that in a second. Let's go again a bit deeper. In this rubric, I have his objectives. Yes. I see that the project modules allow you to define precise objectives for each care recipient. These object objectives can be linked with your facility's own objectives. And if you open one, you can see that you can design your own system of evaluation for the care recipient. So let me get back a little bit. Here I see two operational objectives, choose his clothes himself and get dressed himself. Right. I'm into his objective, get dressed himself. I see there's a description, means and rhythm, who's intervening, so I can attach professionals to this precise objective and these professionals can then follow the evolution of this objective much better through the calendar, through actions, through reports. And I see that there are evaluation criteri criteria. Oh, I have a hard time pronouncing that word. Criteria? Criteria, yeah, that's all right. Criteria. I know what you mean. So bear with me for a second. Here, sure. there is taking a shower, dressing, and mood. Actually, these criteria I have made them myself. Okay. I have decided what they are comprised of. So dressing, did he dress by himself with the help of someone else or was he against dressing? I have put a score next to each answer and this in total will make for an evaluation. Now, what I mean by evaluation, going back into his ISP record, I can click on evaluate. So did he choose his clothes himself? No. Did he dress himself? Not yet. And here, dressing, I see the answers I've suggested. So I have made from scratch an evaluation to follow the evolution of his objectives. Now this Here, would I, this would be tweaked by the client. Tweaked? Uh, tweak means you know um, um, uh, oh, adjusted or or they would come up with their own. Uh... Yeah. Okay. The the idea is that the client can build himself his evaluations. Good. And I like that. Case, and in this case, I have made here multiple choice. Here I have made buttons, but there are many other kinds of evaluations, actually. And I invite you to create an environment where you can show much more kinds. Well, like when the, when the writing, time, a yeah. text, writing a long text, multiple choice, multiple choices instead of just one select, selectable, right. etc. You can make these evaluations and follow the grade of your care recipient and follow his evolution throughout every day. 
Now, long story short, when it comes to ISP, you can create a project, define the objectives, and follow through with evaluation. But this is where I want to show you that Augur is, again, is not only made to store data, but also to exploit them. If I click on Préparation de Réunion de Projet to prepare a project, re, a project meeting, I can organize a meeting on that project and decide on the desired time frame, since when I want all the information since when, mm -hmm. and then decide which elements I would like to gather to prepare for this meeting. So reports, special reports, action reports, transmission, and of course evaluations. By clicking Enregistré, well, I need to just select that. By clicking Enregistré, I'll produce actually a PDF that I can then share with all my coworkers. That's pretty, ah, nothing here, yeah. right now, of course, but I can produce a PDF that I can share with all my coworkers. That is a perfect summary, exactly tailor made to, exp to prepare for the project meeting. Got it. Now, that's all good for the general organization of your recipient's welcome. Admissions, care recipient record, project. Now, I'd like to move on to your daily life and practices, so I'll briefly show you how our calendar and progress note work. The idea is that every day you can follow and record all your activities in Ogiris. So the calendar is right there. It's truly at the center of your day-to-day -day use of Ogiris. This is where you find all the most important information quickly. What you see here is my own professional calendar for the week, but I can check the setting to see different calendars, like mm -hmm. care recipients calendar, other professionals calendar, and resources calendar. I'll get back to that later. I can even but if you just look at something here, I'll choose professional calendar and strangely for a sec, nothing appears. Why? It's because you can choose which professional calendar you want to see. Mm -hmm. And you can even add yours to compare and match. Of course, you can select them all through a very quick click. So, Let's go to a care recipient's calendar. Let's go to a favorite, Achilles. This is my care recipient's uh, schedule right now. Suppose that, that I'd like to create a new event, a new event. I'll just click on the period I'm interested in, say mm -hmm. Friday from right. 12 to 1. And Ojiris will ask me which type of action I want to do. This is very important because Choosing a different type of action, Ogiris will ask you for different informations. These informations will then fill out all the required data you need to know about this information, whether it's a user action, group action, project meeting, admission meeting, uh, or a medical consultation with a generalist doctor or specialist, etc., etc. Basically, you can change all the parameters of all those types of events to fit your needs. So suppose for group actions, you need specific kinds of information, you will also be able to ask for that. Now to see what an event file can look like, let's take a look at Achilles calendar. I see that Achilles has a saxophone class here in relation with his ISP, certainly. Opening the event, I can see who participates as a care recipient and who participates as a professional. Mm -hmm. And with just one click, I can add a new professional to this event. Or I can add a new care recipient. In care recipient report, right here, I can write a report that will be directly attached to the care recipient's record and can easily be found there. 
And if I go into objectives, oh, surprise, I find again the objectives of Achilles regarding his saxophone project. Thus, I think you can easily guess that this event, this action, is linked to the reports made on the care recipient's progress on his project. You remember the, the PDF we made to prepare for the meeting? It might include the, the, the user report that I write here because his objective is included in this action. Last but not least, I see here that you can access resources. I can see that I booked a saxophone and a room for this event. So as you can guess, in Ogiris, you don't just add care recipients and professionals, you can also add the res the, your resources, and each resource has its own calendar. Mm. Here you can see the mm -hmm. saxophone. Just in case, if you happen to create an event that includes someone that is busy or a resource that is not available, Ogiris will immediately tell you. So, in short, the calendar will allow you to easily manage people and resources of your structure and it will gather in a single point all the data you will need to manage your activities day to day. Moving on quickly to the progress note, because it's not all about the calendar. People need to discuss, people need to exchange every day about their care recipients. And sometimes not everybody is in the same room and not everybody has the same information. Let's suppose that Achilles had trouble with another care recipient today. I can report it as a note quickly and precisely. I just go, go to new progress notes. In French it's called transmission. Okay. In a new note, I can give a title to it. So let's say, had a fight. I'm a bit rough here. Probably don't try to put that. Um, I can choose which care recipient is concerned. So it's about Achilles and let's say it's about Hector. And I write what's happened. They had the fight. I choose a category for this progress note so it's much easier to find it. Let's say I want to say it's about their behavior, behavior observations, and I select it. And then I just click record to make this new note. And can you put it in more than one category at if you need to? Um, not right now. Sure. Okay. Good question. Yep. Um, so please don't advertise for that. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize for the question. <laughs> Sorry. No, you, you put it where it stings. It's good. Um, well, I assume that if you had to, you could uh, build, uh, you know, create a second one and put it in, in a different... Uh, that's actually doable. Uh, but again... If you needed to, yeah. Uh, probably a transformation of a program on a, on a certain level. So it's doable. Uh, we just never really had anyone asking for that. Yeah, may, maybe they never will. I don't know. It's That's how my mind works. Uh, uh, you know... Um, As you say that we can... Uh, we can ask our developers for this evolution and we'll discuss it internally. It will take probably some months, but it's doable. Yeah, well, you know, it, it, I, I, again, until the question comes up, like you said, yeah. I'm not going to bring it up, but I could see where in some cases, you know, you might want to have it in more than one category uh, because yeah. maybe, uh, um, you know, you have one category which is directly involved with the patient and another category that may have to do with uh, staffing or something like that. They may need an extra person uh, to special, well, they used to call it specialing a patient where they have somebody with that patient within arm's length 24 hours a day. Uh, by the way, this is like the, the pedagogic progress or administrative uh, progress notes. Right. There is also a progress notebook for medical uh, notes and you can add this note to the medical book very quickly. Oh, okay. So you can put it in more than one. Uh, okay. You, you can put it in two progress notebooks. You very good. You cannot put it in many categories. It's a bit different. Yeah, I don't think you'd need more than one, you know, more than two. Yeah. 
I won't register this one because having an English one on my French environment would be weird. Right. Um, now, um, I'll just want to show you the progress note notebook. Mm -hmm. So you choose which structure you're interested in. You can choose group you're interested in. You can even choose to have only notes on one certain user or one certain category of notes or one certain person writing it. I'll choose all the notes since, uh, let's say, December. So you can see a bit how it looks like. And this is what it looks like. So you see the title, you see what is written, and you see that someone even can add a comment to this note. So he lost his sweater, uh, description, he lost his sweater, and someone commented, but as a result, it has been found again. Mm -hmm. It was actually on the shelf. So that way your teams can really talk all day long about specific uh, care recipients and about specific events, and they will always keep in touch. You don't have to be in the same room. They will always be informed together of all the information they need. Now, this is how daily life is managed mostly on Algiers, is progress notes and calendars will help you have a tool and a perfect knowledge of who is doing what and at what time, and everybody will get the right information at the right moment. I'm not putting it the best way because it's in English and I haven't done any English in years, but you get my point. <laughs> I, I understand. Another quick question. Uh, is there a... Um uh, a record of who's accessing these notes? Of course. Okay, good. Also, besides, the administrator has a record, and there's also restrictions on who can access what. Yeah, that part I, I, I knew, but I was just wondering, because, you know... It's not part uh, of my presentation, but it can totally be part of a question. Right, there might be a situation where uh, somebody is lax and they don't follow, yeah. and they're not looking at the patient's notes from the night before, and then a situation comes up, and they want to know why this person wasn't aware of it since it was in the notes, and they have yeah, a record no. that, he never, that that person never accessed the notes. And then they security can. Security is not what we sell, but security is what our clients need. Yeah, and and, and it's just best, you know, best practices. You know, then yeah. it's turn to that nurse or whatever and say, listen, you know, you really have to, you know, start the day off by looking at the notes, and then from that point on, that problem is resolved. Okay. So to finish now, I've shown you general information about care recipients. I've shown you daily use of auxiliaries through so calendar and progress notes. Um, allow me to just show you how Ogeris can considerably, considerably uh, change the way you gather data. Because Ogeris is not just a tool for every day, it's also a great tool for management. Right. Because it gives you the right information gathered at the right point. Let's, for example, go to um, the list of facilities. And I'll just go to my. So this is the record. This is the file of my facility. And very quickly here, I can ask for all the reports on my, on my facility in my navigator. And there I see who has a project, who has no project, what kind of deficiency they have. I'm not sure we would use the word deficiency. Um, what kind of social security system they are registered to. Here is general, here is general with bonus, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, this shows you that Ogiris can produce a lot of different statistics about your structure. Right. But it goes deeper. You can also produce statistics about your care recipients individually. And uh, this is a very French thing, so I don't know you should probably look for the American equivalent. But if I go in report launcher, I can do um, a 
ANAP indicator report. So I want to show it to you because you don't know what ANAP is and stuff, but basically every year, every French company, every French medical social institution needs to uh, produce a report explaining how many people are in there, how many nights, how many days they spend there, and what kind of activity. And this report gives you all these information in one click because it gathers data from your calendar, from your presence and absence calendar too, because you can decide on presence and absence. You can pre-program uh, presence and absence of your care recipients. And you can then exploit all this information in two clicks, giving you all the data you need to fill out your report to the government at the end of the year. Trust me, when I, when I show this to most of my French clients, this is the moment they want to buy. <laughs> Good to know. It, it is saving them literally ten hours of work. Well, I mean that, like you said, that that's the real key is uh, to show show upper management how the system exactly. can help them reach their goals. Upper management, this is the kind of thing you want to show them, and right. you will have just with Marcelo about which kind of reports you guys need to offer. So, just to finish this presentation quickly, as you can see, Ogeris is not just about collecting and organizing data. data. It can also produce precious data for the management of your facility. Ogeris, long story short, it works at every level. The data shared in Ogeris are shared with all the proper professionals and even between facilities so as to perfectly organize and inform their work. The actualization in real time of the data for everybody can truly transform your practices and guarantee your propagation of information that is both perfect in who it reaches and which content it has. In other words, as I said in the beginning, because I think it really sums up what I want to say, Ogeris is a web-based tool to produce, consult, and share all the data useful to accompany your care recipients. And I am done with my presentation. Um, it was a bit uh, hectic, but I haven't done that in English for quite a long time. So, th this is pretty much w how what you present when you first meet a client. Yeah, but then you have this pretty much, except I'm much more fluent in French. And, uh, no, I, it's okay. <laughs> you don't have to make apologies. And... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm really glad that you shared this with me because it gives me a good uh, a beginning. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, the only issue that we're going to have right now is just translating everything into English. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, once <laughs> once it's in English, then it's pretty much self-explanatory. You know, it, uh, you know, as you're going through it, I find it very intuitive. And, uh, you know, other than uh, training the staff on it, uh, I feel that if, the, if they're the kind of, if, if they do what I do, whenever I have a program, I just click on every little icon and box to see where it takes me. That, that uh, might make a lot of windows on um, Ogeris. Um, one thing they might ask you, ask you by the way, okay. is uh, like there are a lot of icons here. Right. And actually this is because it's a demonstration environment. Um, administrators have more icons. Basically everybody, depending on their functions in the company, have a different number and a different kind of icons. Right. So these icons that I'm looking at right now is the basic for the it's entire also, system. Yeah. Yes, like for example, I have access to all the medical files. Right. If you're not a doctor, if you're not a nurse, it you wouldn't don't be have there. Access to medical files. Right. Care file. So, so, uh, so, in other words, not only uh, can you not access it, but the icon wouldn't even be there for you to click on to be to tell you no. Okay. Because yeah. you don't have to know. Basically. Um, so just so you know, some clients get some clients get paranoid about it, especially after they bought it. Like they're oh why why don't ha do I have the same number of icons as my colleague? And you're like because you don't need them. Right. But basically, you can use the security argument for that. It's like well, to tell you the truth, I you know my my reply is 
it, it, you want more work? Is that what you're asking for? <laughs> I mean, you know, for the most part, these are the, the, the this is the workload that's designed for your uh, your station. You know, for for the for your position in the company, and uh, you don't really want all the rest of that stuff. Trust me, especially you don't want uh, patient medical information if it's not well, part of your job description because I, all. Yeah, all that'll do is get you in trouble one day. You don't want people I, banging on medical informations. He's probably restricted in the United restricted in the United States. And on that point, I would seriously advise you to, to get a. I guess you have information about this, but prepare some speeches about this. Well, you know, for for that type of complaint, you just say you need to speak to your administrator, or you need to speak to the you know upper management. That, yeah, that so, that's a that's a, a local issue. It's not a broad issue for the entire program. And yeah. if I was in a training class and someone brought that up, that's how I would respond to them. I just say that's something you need to speak to your manager with, your or your supervisor. And uh, if it's appropriate, you know, then then you'll get it. And if it's not, he'll explain why. Just so you know, um, in. in I'll give you a brief example of things you can say to your clients, even though it's a bit, I mean, it's slightly inappropriate, but um, in France, at least, nurses are not allowed to make prescriptions, medical prescriptions. Right. As it turns out, in many social medical institutions today, nurses do. And because the doctors don't have time to go into OGRIS, mostly doctors don't have times to go into this, so the nurses take care of the doctor's profile. But they're, do is, they're doing it under the doctor's uh, supervision, though. Whether or not he's actually watching every little thing, the doctor and, gave them permission, that's the thing, right? That's the thing, Lawrence, this is not legal. <laughs> no, I, I know so, it's not legal. <laughs> I, I, so what I'm saying is that if they ask you, can we do this, the answer is your administrator can do this, but legally we are obliged to tell you that you shouldn't. We must tell you that you shouldn't, but no, you yeah, do. I'm not sure. And I I would probably just say no, <laughs> and then if there's and and then speak to your speak to your supervisor. You know, if they're it's, used to doing it, it that way. Do. But I'm just saying, some of our clients. No, uh, I understand and, what you're saying. I do understand. I don't, I don't want to look shady here, seriously. Well, like. I just know some clients do it, and we don't like it. We told them already we're not responsible for this. Right. Let me put it to you this way. In America, uh, if I want to drop off a drug sample to a, a physician, that physician has to sign for it. The yeah. nurse can't sign for it. The sec Now, years ago, anybody could sign for it in that office. And... For, and, then, and then when we required a doctor's signature, sometimes the nurse or the receptionist would step around the corner, sign the doctor's name and bring it back. And, you, and back then, it was acceptable because the truth of the matter is you can give a power of attorney. In other words, you're allowed to have somebody sign your name like your lawyer can sign your name on a legal document. And it's, yeah. and it's legal, as long as you don't, you know, uh, um, object to it. Having said that, today, everything's done with computers, and, you, and now the signatures are done on computer. So, if more than one person signs that person's name, the computer will eventually catch on to it, <laughs> and they'll get a, you know, and the FDA will be knocking on their door. So... I think in America, my answer is going to be, you know, you know, no. I'm surprised that they that you're even getting away with it, unless the doctor is signing his name with an X. I'm not sure if they could really yeah. uh, do that nowadays. I and uh, uh, you know, now having you, said that, there's there's no reason why the nurse can't uh, write up the prescriptions and then have the doctor sign it all at one time, like at the end of the day, or they just run and get it done. In fact, I'm pretty sure with e-scripts, electronic scripts that we're using now in the States, 
the doctor's signature is on file. I don't believe that the doctor signs every prescription because it's an electronic prescription now. Uh, subs- yeah. uh, prescription. So, so chances so are, so yeah. Chances. So far we use tokens. So it's basically USB keys that work as that work as identification keys. It's token plus identification in print. I don't know how it's going to be in the US. I guess for now we're, we're going to use the same system. I don't know. Well, but it's, yeah, either doctor, way, uh, either way, uh, it's the doctor's okay. responsibility. So if the doctor allows his staff to, uh, you know, uh, set up certain prescriptions and it goes, it, it'll go through, but it's not the staff that is responsible, it's still the physician. You know, the physician may have confidence in his staff that they are not going to mess up, but it's his uh, DEA, it's, it's his license that's on the line. Yep. So. You know, I mean, I, I, I've, I've been to a number of practices where they have, um, you know, staff seeing patients that are maybe not even an RN. They could be an LPN, you know, like a two-year nurse, uh, a nurse with a two-year degree, and they should not be doing any of this. But if the doctor, uh, you know, if it's over, if it's, well, anyway, you get the idea. Uh, do you have any question on the presentation? Because like this is uh, no, nah, it was an excellent presentation. I'm going to review now that I have it on video. I'm going to watch it again a few times over the next couple of weeks. You know, I, I'll probably watch it every day now, so you'll be locked into my brain by the time I come out to France. Um, so, do you get the point? It's like you, no, I do. I, I do. I organize read my presentation as. Uh, Every day, I mean, long time informations like care recipient records project, then everyday actions, then long time management. Right. Uh, you can you can do more than that in the sense that you could also go into like short term management. There are also tools for that. There are tools for everything. It's way too many. To be honest, I don't know how to use half of these things. Um, I'm just I'm just a sales guy. <laughs> uh, well, that's all right. When we get together, I'll I'll I'll, I'll give you some some uh, some extra tools. Uh, as an example, um, some of the things that you sh- you might want to think about that I'm going to use out here in America is when I'm sitting there with a client who is not electronic but still using paper files because they're a, a smaller uh, organization. There are um, a, a lot of financial reasons as an example with a paper file only one person can uh, you know process that file so yeah. the physician is seeing the patient taking notes then it goes to well it starts off with some staff member pulling the file you got to pay a salary to that person to do that, to pull the files and put them back in. Then the physician takes the file, goes in the back, does his or uh, her uh, evaluation, writes it in there. Then the file may go to the accounting part where they're going to, uh, you know... Um, uh, um, you can basically explain that everything can be solved right on Ogiris by everybody acting on the same file at the same time. Right. So the point is, is that uh, because you, you, it may be costing you an extra week or two before you yeah. get reimbursed for that patient. But if you can get it all done in the same day, then you're speeding up the reimbursements, which means that you have more funds at your disposal. That's just one aspect. The f- a, lot of, a lot of clients are worried that it takes time to implement the tool at their place, like make it a habit for everybody to use it, understand how it works. We do formations and especially at the launching, in the, during the launching part of, of the process, we are really there to train them if they need us. Right. They need to pay, but <laughs> but good. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, listen, um, as a salesman, I'm never afraid to, you know, be honest and 
and and ask for the business and show them what the costs are. I know this is where uh, we in, in, in I mean I'll be honest in France we have a slightly different culture about this. Uh, it's like people are okay. I need to pay for extra for me, extra training. I wish you didn't make me pay for extra training. It's your two after all. Anyway, uh, I don't know how it's going to be. I don't know how it's going to be in the U.S. Well, you got you got to flip it around and say. Most of our clients don't require extra training, and in order to save you money, we didn't want to uh, add that no. expense into okay. the purchase uh, there price. Is one thing you need to understand: everybody <laughs> requires training. No, I know that. I know that. But and what I'm saying it's is that, not that like we, we want money, so we make people do training. It's like literally this thing requires training. <laughs> no, I'm not uh, saying that. The point is, you said extra training, and it costs money. And you just point to them and say, well, you know, some of your staff may need extra training. Some of your staff will get it right off the bat. And in actuality, we're trying to save you money because for those staff members that don't need the extra training, you're not going to pay for it. Otherwise, we'd have to add X amount of dollars for each uh, of your, you know, staff that's using the system, whether or not they need the training. So we're trying to save you money. <laughs> like I said, as a salesman, you can always turn it around and make it a okay, positive sure. instead of a uh, negative. I'm not, I mean, again, uh, I'm not, uh, I don't know if Arsenal told you, I don't, I mean, I incidentally worked in sales here. <laughs> oh, no, no, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to, you know. Uh, I, I, I really don't have your experience. So no, I, I yeah, I'm not trying to be a wise guy here. I'm, you know. Uh, you, you know, uh, Marcelino will tell you that as as he's training me and showing me things, my mind is constantly working, asking questions that I think people are going to ask me, yeah. and and coming up with solutions for problems that he brings up to me. So, like, well, you just brought up a problem to me about you know the extra money that they have to pay for the training. And I always find a way to soft sell it, you know, to, to reverse it and say, yeah, you're right. I mean, it does cost more, but in the long run, you're saving money because, you know, and then you kind of just flip it around. Uh, it but, well, I mean, um, no, I see, I, I see. It's just, uh, yeah, no, okay. Uh, Lawrence, are you still there? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm still, still here. here. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> I'm still uh, here. Uh, Honestly, like I'm interested in knowing how you do your sales speech, and uh, I'll, I'll be looking forward to see your your sales speech on all of yours. Oh yeah, uh, well I, I, so I'm going to come up with a pitch, but for the most part, other than the way you did it in terms of getting into a flow where you're just going through the system and what their needs are, eventually what I'll be doing is I'll just be uh, you know I, I rather than. Um, uh, uh, selling by, um, you know, what's the word I want to use? It's called need, uh, need satisfaction selling. In other words, I will, you know, when I sit down with a client, I like to listen to the client and find out what their concerns are and then, uh, you know, uh, fulfill those concerns with the system and say, oh, you're interested in this? Well, our system can do this. Yeah, but the, this, this is where the questions uh, part is very important. And as you could see in my presentation, I said, I do a presentation, of course, it's not going to be enough to express, to, to explain to you everything. I just want to show you some basic things. And very often I get clients who, right after the presentation, ask me a question about something totally right. different. And like, oh, and you don't do that, by the way, because I haven't seen it. Right. Like, oh, yeah, of course you do that. Look, it's right there. And there. Right, right. That, and that's right. exactly. And, and I did have some clients who were like, well, you should have started with this. Uh, the thing is, we designed this presentation not as a perfect pitch for each different client, but as a generic pitch. Uh, no, I thought you did a great job. The thing I loved about your presentation is that you do, you do explain it as a feature benefit. And as long as you do that, you know, features don't sell themselves. So when you sit there and yeah. say, well, the system can do this, doesn't mean, you know, so what? 
But if you can answer the so what and say it does this so that you can do that, then then yeah, that that's true salesmanship. Yeah, and uh, well, you see, it's quite, it's. Uh, I mean, honestly, in France, the product pretty much sells itself. What when you do this? Right. Like, um, I had some clients who really wanted highly personalized stuff, and based on that, they said no because, like. Um, you ask for changing generic reports, and um, basically you can only do it with templates. What I told you about uh, just a box to check if you want the social security number or not, uh, this is advanced uh, administration. This mm -hmm. might require intervention on the code, and this, this will require investment. Also on our side. In that sense, this is like super hardcore personalization. So far, I don't know any client who needs this uh, because usually the institution would be more willing to decide on what they want in each kind of file. They create a template for that, and that's it. Right. Uh, but apart from that, apart from clients who really want something extremely specific, uh, there are usually, I'd say, three tools three basic tools you can show them. Um, no, just two actually. So one of them is list parametrable, um, administrable lists, basically. And here you can change, like you remember transmissions had categories? Yeah. Well, you can change the categories of transmissions. You can change them here, create a new one, um, so, uh, delete one, activate or deactivate one. Got it. Yeah. yeah. The one thing I don't include in my presentation, but you will need to know, is the presence um, module. I'll show it to you now, because it's it's one of it's one of our star tools, even though it's not in the presentation. Mm -hmm. So what you see here are, um, for each user, his presence and absence in my, in my institution. Mm. Um, this is morning, this is afternoon, you can also do hour, 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 you can do anywhere, and in any kind you want, depending okay. on how people work in your place. Um, a lot of our institutions we work with, they work on day basis, so they just have one line saying day here. And see, all the P's here means presence. And this has been automatically filled because his code by default is presence and the code by default in his structure is presence. Okay. Um, when I talk to you about the ANAP uh, report, um, this is the information it's actually feeding on. And when you see an M here, it's not here because maladie, which means sickness. P means presence. F means the, the, the institution is closed. These are regular absence or specific kind of presence. You understand? Yes. So, because uh, I'm not sure I'm... In, in, slightly harder in English. Um, and of course you can change one in absence manually mm -hmm. here. So if someone is actually not there, you can change it. Right. So the point of this is, even these, the color, the names, the content, even these you can change. Depending on people, and some presents are uh, included in the facturation, in the bills, in the billing. Some are not. Some include a meal. Some do not. You can even take out a report on the meals, the number of meals you've given. Okay. This report exists. I won't show it to you now, but it is there. And all this, all these codes of presence and absence is also in the least administrable. 
So the thing is, I don't know which environment you're being given. So there is a chance that your least administrab will be somewhere else. So please take a note, it's this thing, list and parametrab. Well, the good news is, is for me, is that uh, when I do have these presentations, uh, Marceline will be sitting by my side. So, yeah. uh, fortunately, uh -huh. I'll, you know, my English, I'll, I'll be doing the presentation, but, um, you know, uh, as I absorb everything out of his head <laughs> into mine, but at least... Uh, for the most part, unless we wind up, unfortunately, being split up between two accounts at the same time, which I don't think will happen that often, we'll, we're going to team up on, uh, you know, for, the, yeah, for this year. It's better, it's better that you also know these kind of things, because uh, Marcella is very good at presenting things from a technical point of view. He That's correct, be, right. Uh, he, he needs your advice and help on sailing in the U.S., you know. Right, and I can't sell unless I'm an expert on the program, which I plan to become. So, I mean, I agree with you. Uh, I want to know as much as he knows, uh, even though, I, I mean, I'm not a lazy salesman. The, uh, you know, you probably know this from your experience, is that when you walk in there with confidence, because... You, you can answer almost any question they're going to throw at you. That confidence translates over to them, and they're more likely to sign a contract. Because, I'm sure you'll have that. Yeah, and there's no, there's no way around it. Uh, when I was talking, you know, we, when we were talking about me going out to France, you know, for a week or two for the training... You know, I just said to myself, well, you know, oh, isn't it, is, you know, people have said to me, oh, isn't that wonderful? Aren't you excited? And I'm like, it doesn't matter whether I'm in France or right here in the U.S. I'm not going to be, out, I'm not out sightseeing. I'm going to be studying, you know, all day. And then when I go back to the hotel, I'll be studying all night. Because the, the more I put into it right now, the more likely I'll be successful if I if I don't do that, then uh, I'm wasting. We're both wasting our time. So you know, my idea is simple: is to be the best I can be, understanding the system, so I can explain it. Uh, the salesman, you know, I I know how to sell. Product knowledge is the most important thing. Once you know your product inside and out, and as time goes on, I'll understand my competition, which will be the apps and systems that they're using right now uh, that yeah. we're going to convert them from, then, 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 it won't be, then it'll be a no-brainer. Sure. So let me show you some other things Good. Uh, so you can become an expert. Thank you. Uh, this is Gestion des Rapports is a report managing file, basically. Okay. Where you manage your reports, you know when I talk to you about templates. Uh-huh. So this is to download uh, the template. This okay. Is to send the template back, and this is to send the template as a test. And in the same way, this is to make the report, and this is to make a test report. So sometimes you can't download a template. I don't know exactly why, because um, I haven't tried all of them, of course. But basically, these are all the kinds of reports they are. And if you can translate them, uh, you'll get a better ID. This is a um, care recipient record, for example, that you've seen before. This is where you can modify it. Okay. And it's quite simple. I mean, you download it. It arrives in a docx um, format. And then you just open it, change it, and re-upload it. So this is also something you might uh, start to show, like you say, if it's not enough, you have that. All right. Very good. Oh. Um, there is also all the reports on certain people. It's very easy. You choose what you want to have in the report. I could sometimes I include this one in my presentation, but and then you choose which care recipient you want. You might have noticed that my care recipients are based on 
actually based on uh, uh, Greek mythology. Yeah. Um, yeah, and this is the list of all the reports I'm interested in, and I can print them in one click here. It's very fast. There's a lot of clicking, printing options. See, this is the calendar. You can export it in PDF. It's basically like in English, so I guess sure. you understood that. So yeah, all these little things, I really advise you to play with it a bit. Even yeah. if it's in French, I'm pretty sure you can understand. Yeah, I mean, you know, the nice thing about French is a lot of the words are similar to English words, so it's not that bad. And like I, I, I have a, uh, you know, I, I would think say that yeah. the other way. <laughs> anyway, it's, uh, it's all because we have fifty uh, percent of English is coming from Latin, and eighty uh, percent of French is coming from Latin. <laughs> um, well, out here on Long Island, actually, we have a lot of Indian names because Long Island really? had some Indian tribes. We even have a uh, reservation out here on Long Island. So okay. when you look at the names of the towns, they're, you know, they're actually names that the Indians came up with for those areas or their tribes. Well, that shouldn't look like that. Yeah. We got places like Hop Hog, you know. And, uh, yeah, that's an Indian name. There's a lot of them out here. But anyway, <laughs> no, listen, like I said, I had taken French. I, I'm i sorry that I never, I, I never really focused on languages. I, I, I really respect anybody that can speak more than one language. And, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an attempt. I don't expect to start speaking French, but I figure, uh, you know, I'll uh, become more more accustomed to some of the words until we make it, you know, turn this English. Yeah. And um, at the same time, there are times where uh, Marceline and I are talking and he'll ask me, you know, he'll come across a, a word and look for a good um, uh, substitute in English for that yeah. word. Because sometimes the direct translation isn't clear enough. Yeah, I've, I've tried. Um, I've tried not doing too much. I've, I've tried substituting a bit, but again, unlike Marcel, I haven't studied. Uh, uh, I haven't studied um, the American or English market on this, so I right. really don't know how you guys work. And a lot of terms, as you have probably seen, are very legal terms, like yeah. in French. The project has a very, I mean, is basically, the project is a, is a, is a government ID, basically. And uh -huh. so they have a specific name for it, and everybody has basic names for it. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, it is, it is I yeah. Don't know. This should be fine. That, that, yeah, uh, well, that, that, we, that's the easy part to work through, actually. I mean, it's, it's a lot of work because of all the uh, windows that come with the program, and you have to go in there and change every single one of them. But having said that, it's, it's easy and doable. So, Yeah, it's going to be done. Yeah, it's just a lot of work, uh, that's all. But, uh, I did want to do this um, in case you want to create these post-its here. Because these kind of little post-its. Yeah, those post-its are nice. I like that idea. Yeah, you can actually make them for your uh, environment. You can even send them to your other professional environments, to your colleagues' environments. Um, I like to say, please don't abuse it. Because, uh, it can become quite crazy. Right. Uh, I like it because it, it, it does contain like two things so you don't understand but here basically the, both of these are medical notes yeah so they're bullet points I don't present medical notes I'm kind of hinting at my clients that they can ask me questions about it uh, here is about giving vitamins and the, here is about medical profile me medical record uh huh and this is the quote I start and end my presentation with because I think it's, a, it's just a good summary of all of it Right. Uh, so to create notes, you go into here, metage. It literally looks like notes, right? Post it. Yep. So you have the list. You go to plus, ajouter. 
everything in red uh, means you have to write it in order to, to create it. You cannot create a note without a title and without someone you, you're asking to have this posted. Right. It's great. So it's you, great. Can't, you can't move forward until you fill those boxes. Then just don't touch everything else. This is like, if you want it for two days this week, this month, or long term, uh, when it ends, starting when, state is waiting, accepted, open, stuff. Don't, just don't worry. Write anything you want. And next time you reboot your, your environment, you will have this note. Right. Written. And it's really a good eye catcher. At least for me, it was a good eye catcher for my clients. Like, if they, if they want to, like, look at something else on the screen, they look at this and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I can try that. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's nice to uh, shake things up a little bit. Otherwise, it gets a little stale. And it, it gives them an idea that, that they can do it, that they can this way communicate, maybe. Anyway, um, I don't know which environment you will receive, but basically, uh, it's up to you to create your own story with your environment. Yeah, yeah, I'll probably create a, um, what do you call it, a, um, oh gosh, a PowerPoint presentation as well, in English. Yeah. And then uh, I'll, I'll sh look everything that I'm going to do. I'll be sharing with you as my yeah. as a fellow salesman. Uh, the more successful you are in France and Belgium and UK, etc., the more successful I'll be in the United States. There's yeah, no question about it. If I understood well, you will do most of your presentations live so far. And I've, did, I've done this presentation like this because it's it's distance presentation. As no, I appreciate see, this. I uh, you know uh, in my Chrome, I'm pretty sure if I did it live, I would probably use a PowerPoint. I'm not sure actually. Maybe just not even a PowerPoint. No, I would probably uh, for me it's going to be a mix of the two. The PowerPoint is just to get certain information across, but then when you want to show them. Yeah you know, uh, how the system actually works, then it's it's great to be able to just pull up the system and click around like you just did. So, you know, the, it, it, these are all different techniques just to keep the client interested uh, and, um, you know, uh, you don't want them to like fall asleep in the middle of a presentation. And you can see when their eyes are kind of like, you know, uh, uh, or, or, or they're or they're fidgeting around or something like that. Then then you gotta like switch to a different type of presentation, and, and that's the way I look at it. Um, you know, you just want to shake it up a bit. You know, keep them keep them interested. Uh, but you know, for the most part, it's 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 a lot of listening. You know, yeah. You gotta hit, find out what what their needs are, what their five year plan is where you know where they expect to be in the future and then be able to show how this system is going to help them get there and once you're able to do that then they're going to buy into it i know it sounds simple i know it's not simple i know you're out there it's for uh, for you and me it's a numbers game you know uh fortunately in manhattan alone we have about we have over three hundred nonprofits that we can target. Yeah, yeah Marcel, now, there's no way that you're going to tell me that out of three hundred, I'm not going to get a couple of them. That's a numbers game. Out, out of three hundred, we're going to get a few of them are going to come on board right away. Yeah, you have time to you have time to train. <laughs> yeah, so you know after I get my training done, and like I said. I plan like for instance I I took um, he had sent me this the uh, product documentation y you're looking at me now right yeah, yeah, yeah no so he sent me this this is the whole you know uh, paper one which um, I'm rereading yeah. and then what I did was I just took all of the uh, bullet points the summaries and scrolls it down onto the pages without all the extra information. So once I once I feel comfortable enough with this, then I'm going to use these bullet points, the summaries, 
to start developing a PowerPoint presentation and yeah. organizing my, my pitch or my presentation to the client. Everything that I do, I'll send you a copy of it. Great. And, okay. uh, hope, and, and again, look, uh, I, I, you know, the stuff that I send you, you use it, you don't use it, whatever you feel works for you. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've worked in a number of companies, I've been very successful, and when I talk to my counterparts across the country, a lot of times they'll say to me, oh, you can do that in New York, we can't do that out here in Ohio. And, you know, my answer has always been, listen, whatever works for you and whatever works for your personality. You know, different set, there are different people, there's no like one set way of selling. And, you know, uh, I like to tell jokes. I, um, I'm very uh, uh, kind of family oriented when I, when I meet people. Uh, I kind of build a friendship up right away. You know, the, my, my, whole, my whole approach is to, as quickly as possible, get my clients to feel confident that I'm going to give them the straight story. You know, that I'm going to tell them the truth and I'm going to show them how, you know, my product is going to improve their, their life. You know, uh, so when I'm talking to medical professionals, I want to make them understand that by using our system, it's going to improve the quality of life of their patients. And there's no question that it, that, that'll happen. And as a professional, it's going to improve the outcomes for the physician, nurse, social worker, etc. If, they can, if, if we can meet those two goals, improve the quality of life of patients, improve the outcomes for our professionals, then uh, it's very difficult for them to say no. If they're saying no, it's not because they didn't buy into the system. It's because there are other factors. The factors yeah. could be, you know, there's a dozen people that have to vote on it. Or they've already committed their budget and we're going to have to wait till next year. Or maybe, and again, this is a big one that I, you know, that I was talking about, is the fact that when I sold electronic medical records, a lot of my client, my doctors loved the system but was afraid that we wouldn't survive as a company because there were so many other companies that were going in and out of business. And if they committed themselves to our system and didn't and 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 uh, the system crashed on them they'd lose their entire business. And, and, we, and we saw that happen with other companies. Uh, one of the things that we did with those electronic medical records is that we had two uh, computers, one that they kept in their office and one they kept at home. In case the office burned down, they'd always have a backup. Anyway. Yeah, you should ask Marcelo about saving data and the protection of data. He knows much more than me about this. No, we did talk about it, and he did tell me that it's it's um, backed up in two separate places, a certain amount of miles apart, so there shouldn't be any issues with that. Uh, I have to go in like two minutes. Okay. So, uh, I can't thank you enough. I wish yeah, you no, all the best. Uh, welcome again. I hope you I hope you enjoy it. I mean, medical social is not the most sexy, but it's uh, I mean it's a good place for sales, and you'll be meeting professionals who are really, at least in front, they're really genuinely interested in what you're selling because they're genuinely interested in improving their, their management and improving the life of their care receipt. Yeah, I agree. And and it's great to be at, at, at a ground, you know, uh, starting at the ground level and building a business out here. Oh, did I just lose you? Oh, no, there you are. Okay, so, so thanks again. And hopefully I'll see you in two weeks in France when I'm out there. I'll be there. Take care. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Thanks again. Bye. There was a video and cool.